here <laughs> is always in all of my interviews uh, a big part of how I came to that realization. My mom did grow up. This is the first time I talk about this story with her here, so <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, she grew up in a generation that really believed that thin was everything, and you had to look stick thin. And as a, also as a Latina woman, there are a lot of pressures to maintain this almost unrealistic body and physique that, come on, I mean, we can't set these standards for ourselves. But I did see her struggle with eating disorders, struggle to find her beauty. And what was the craziest thing to me is that as her daughter, I always saw her as beautiful. Like she was the most beautiful woman in the world to me. And this woman couldn't see her beauty. She was so stuck on needing to fit a jean size or a dress size that she spent a lot of her life waiting to be happy. And I think that's what struck me the most. So I didn't want to wait to be happy. I didn't want to wait, you know, I didn't want to have every jean size in the world in my closet waiting for that moment when I would fit it. Um, and so I started going to acting school and I started, you know, getting involved with groups of people who were encouraging and loving. And I think through the arts, I really found myself, I found my voice. You know, I also danced ballet. I was listening to your story. I wish I would have had that courage because at nine years old, because I looked so much like a woman, I quit. And there's not a ballet in this world that I watch that I don't cry about. And so kudos to you for sticking it out. And to so many people who get told, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can do anything. There are no limitations in this world. If you can believe it and you can dream it and you believe in yourself, you are absolutely capable of achieving those dreams. And so, yeah, um, I'm 5'7", I'm not tall, I'm not thin by any means, so you can imagine that growing up fashion was the last thing in my mind that I was gonna accomplish. I was like, I'm gonna be an actress, I'm gonna be a singer, I'm gonna dance, you know? I dreamt of everything and I moved to California when I was 18 years old and I was like, well, I'm gonna be famous real quick. You know, I had trained my whole life for acting and come to find out, we were not in a position in our industry where people were accepting of curves. I uh, was getting told, lose weight. If you lose 10, 15, 20 pounds, you'll be fantastic for this role. You know, you have the leading lady personality, but the best friends, you know, the girl next door is body type. And I was like, how dare these people not understand my talent? You know, I had trained. Why was my brain not enough? Why was, you know, what I had worked so hard for my craft not enough to get me these parts? And so I took a step back and didn't allow that to change me. Every time they told me to lose weight, I told them no. I was like, I'm sorry, but if you don't like me like this, then, this, then, you didn't, then I'm not who you want. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm glad that I stuck to my guns in that because a few months later, I got into makeup school because I'm a creative at heart. And I was like, look, I want to be a part of this somehow. Uh, so I actually went to makeup school. And doing makeup, I got discovered for modeling. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how the world allows you to see your path clear as you understand yourself and as you become happier internally, everything kind of falls into place. And this photographer was like, have you ever thought of modeling? And I was like, oh my God, this lady's crazy. Like, I'm <laughs> short and chubby, like, what are you talking about? Um, and so I allowed her actually to take my pictures only because I thought that I would get some good pictures for my makeup portfolio. And that's how crazy this world is. And soon after, she started getting emails asking, who is this girl? And she would reach out to me like, hey, they want to work with you. Would, would you be interested? And so this was over 10 years ago. I'm so thankful for that woman who saw something in me that I myself had yet to see. And so that's why it's so important to encourage others and support others and to speak kind words. If you see someone and they look wonderful, tell them. You, you know, go. there's nothing wrong with that. Seeing someone else's power and, and success doesn't limit your own. And I think when I allowed myself to try something different, everything fell into place. And I've been modeling now for over 10 years. I've had the amazing opportunity to be in magazines, work for clients like Target and Macy's and Nordstrom and, and anyone that I probably have ever shopped at. And so also I, 2014, had the amazing privilege to walk in New York Fashion Week. Yes. I was the first ever plus size model to walk multiple shows at New York Fashion Week. I, yeah. um, but it was something that just had never been done. I was, I couldn't believe myself. I was backstage about to open the show for Chromat and I felt like I had finally discovered myself. I was, I had the whole industry on my shoulders. It was a moment where everyone who had told me no could see that my perseverance made a difference. I, I, was, I was more than their words. I was more than my body. I was myself and I was powerful. And that 
was an incredible feeling to say the least. And then I got a call a few days later from Serena Williams and she was like, oh my God, I would love to have you in my show. And I remember getting fit for her and being like, oh, how many curvy girls do you have? And she's like, you're the only one. And that kind of settled on me. The fact that we were right there creating the revolution that we had been working so hard for. It was finally that moment of acceptance and inclusion. And I had no idea. I was backstage at the runway show for Serena Williams and I hear everyone backstage saying, Anna's here, Anna's here. And I'm thinking, we're talking about. Nonetheless, I don't know if most of you youngins know, but Anna Wintour is kind of the end all be all of fashion. She's the editor of Vogue and not someone that people get in a room with very often, <laughs> especially not curvy girls. So to have her sit at the front row and watch me walk that runway um, was surreal. And halfway through the runway, people started clapping. I think it was my agent who started it and it, was, it could have been really embarrassing. Um, but by the time I made it to the end of that catwalk, the entire room was clapping and it felt like a scene out of a movie where we had finally had the change. It was, it was there, it was clear and it wasn't going anywhere. And you know, that was 2014. This year we've had amazing progress and last year, the Refinery29 event was fantastic where I met Stacy at. We've seen girls on the cover of Vogue now, on the cover of Sports Illustrated, on the cover of everything. We're in the magazines. We're not going anywhere. We're not a fad. We are women. We are. We can look however we are. We don't have to change. And that's the beauty of it. And going back to the non-retouching part that I heard you guys touch on, on the in the show, I think that's really special because up until last year, every image that I did was retouched. And I am a mom, and I am not perfect, and that's okay. But I kept seeing these clients, even though we were making this progress, still feel the need to alter my body when the final product came out. And last year, I had a client release my images unretouched, and it made a really big statement. And I didn't realize how many women needed to see the fact that not even models are perfect. I work with everyone, the most beautiful, the top models in the world. And they don't look like those pictures in the magazines, guys. That, that standard that they've set for women is not even real to them. Uh, so I think that we're moving into an age of fashion where women are, are embracing that diversity and that uniqueness and that unperfectly perfect aspect that we all have. And so actually in the latest Sports Illustrated, I was in a Lane Bryant ad and they left. I had no idea. I had all of my stretch marks, cellulite, stuff that normally wouldn't be seen in those kind of magazines, but it's here. And I'm so proud of that because my daughter is eight years old and she has been the victim of bullying and I have seen her come home and be like, hey mommy, how can I get my thighs to be this big? And I'm like, baby, that's not for you. And so I personally know how early these images start factoring in, start playing a role, start infiltrating our children's brains. And so I urge you to have your kids, you know, do affirmations, tell them how beautiful and perfect they are, always encourage them to reach their dreams and to do everything because they're so precious. Looking around this room and seeing these beautiful painted faces and these beautiful girls just shows me that we can make a difference and that we have a voice and that we do need to use it for the right reasons because we will go one day and they will be what we leave behind and we have to make sure they're better than what we had growing up. And so I'm so proud to be here. You guys have had an amazing event. It's an honor to be able to speak to you. And trust me, you can't judge a book by its cover. We can all afford to be a little kinder and gentler in this world, not only to others, but definitely to ourselves. And so I hope you take away from this that you can be short and chubby and you can model and you can probably do anything in the world that you set your minds to. So please believe in yourself and go for it. <laughs>